Must be quite with all the drinking going on. So uh, I am CCP Tabion. Uh, I would like to welcome you for this. To get started, a few words about myself. Uh, I have been working at CCP Game as a game master and now as a game designer. You may know me for small pieces. So every time, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's why we have the name here. Just like, for example, for Dominion, I had to look at uh, faction ships. And um, for Questable, I had to look at uh, tier three battle cruisers in general. And uh, so, why do we have this? Why now here? That's because, I mean, Heath is a bit that's very respectable in the MMO industry, but in game design, as we started offering, but uh, as you start, Uh, this is uh, the result of a project we started last summer to have a look at chip balancing in general and possibly not start from scratch, but take a good step back and see what do we have in front of us and where do you want to uh, going. So here is still something going on in nine years from now regarding chip balancing. So uh, two things, we got to get started. Uh, the first one, please remember that all of this here is still work in progress. It's most likely not going out for months. So don't start screaming. We have emergency exit at the back. And so still work in progress. And the second thing is that we may not have time for questions, unfortunately, because this presentation is a bit lengthy. But we encourage you to come at the round table. I think it's on Saturday at 2. Please do come and tell us if you like it, if you don't like it. Please be constructive. Don't start just yelling and just having random inconsistent feedback. Uh, so yeah, please do come if you have feedback at the round tables after that. So yeah, let's get started. So this presentation is going to be split into different parts. So the first one, we are going to have a look at how the heat balancing design is supposed to be working right now on TQ. Notice I said supposed to be working. And then we have a look on um, several ideas on how to improve it. So just one question, how many here did read the blog about uh, ship balancing? Could you raise your hands here? OK, OK, that's good. That means most of you already know most of the stuff that's going here. You most likely vented the rage out already by kicking your sister in the face. So that's OK. I mean, I'm most likely not to get some blunt object in my face right now. Excellent. So let's get started. First, let's have a look how it's supposed to work, how we in game design are supposed to sort shapes in general, and how all of this shape is supposed to work. Well, I mean, we find variables. Find variables, how to differentiate the shapes. And I mean, of course, you do know about them, so um, it's going maybe to be a little too obvious right now, but you need this to understand the second part. The first variable we use is size. And as your girlfriend most likely told you, size does matter for ship balancing. So size. Size impacts a lot of things. It impacts on which kind of models you can fit on your ship. It impacts how speedy your ship is going to be. It impacts the role. It impacts what you want to be on the battlefield. So when you start in here, you start with a small category, like frigates and destroyers. And then you move on as you get more experience and more skills. You move on into the biggest class, like medium, with like cruisers and battle cruisers, and then you move into battle battleships. And finally, we have our beloved capital ships. So size has a certain number of consequences. First of which is experience. I mean, you start at the forget category as a new player, and as you move on with time, you go into the capital one. Of course. That's only a recommendation. You are free not to choose recommendation, but if you don't, then you're most likely to end up as a kill mail in low sec 
while trying to smart bomb gates in a Titan, for example. <laughs> so, again, if you follow this, then replacement. Not only replacement is cost, but it's also the general ease to replace this. I mean, replacing a forget fitting is really quickly, but if you want to just have a look at the capital and replace fitting and make sure maintenance is working, it's just a lot more uh, clumsy. Then we have the purpose. The purpose is just like, since smaller ships are supposedly smaller, and you can use them for like hit and run tactics, just like uh, fast ganks, whereas the, on the other side of the ladder for capitals, it's more of like static fleet fight with just imposing ships, just soaking the damage. And then, I mean, the attributes, it's just basically what I said right now, between the two, so you can see fast, agile, flighty, fleeting for frigates, and uh, solo, resilient, and imposing for capitals. The second variable we have is tech. So tech, you know it when you start the game with tech one. Tech one is the first reference you get used to. I mean, tech one chips are supposed to be the most basic ones. And uh, then, then, as you just go and train into the game, you have access to like Falcon ships, which are just plain improvements over Tech 1. You have Tech 2 ships, which are supposed to be specializations. And you have Tech 3, which are supposed to be generalization over Tech 1. So uh, the question you may ask yourself right now is why do we have a small square for Tech 1, and why do we have like huge blobs for the Tech? Well, that's because of our own shortcomings. That's because we ourselves don't know exactly where each blob is supposed to be. I mean, is that tech two specialization supposed to be overstepping faction or getting improvement? Is tech three supposed to be on par with tech two? How exactly in percentage? We don't know exactly. And that's why we wanted this project as well, to just define this as you will see it in the next slide. So the second is tech. And how does it translate into like ship progression? Again, in blue here, you have like the Tech 1 ships for Amar, like you start with Amar frigates, Amar cruiser, Amar battleships, capitals, and then at the bottom you have the industrial line. And you have the two generic skills with destroyers and battle cruisers. Then you move here, the navy ships in green. The factions, the pirate ships, are just a bit weird because you need, for example, for the Blob Raider, you need Amar battleship and the Milmata battleship for the Balgon, for example. And then you have Tech 2, which is just like this huge Big Mac of shit inside the blue lines. Just like, yeah, OK, I want to go into ADS or ships, so where do I go for the follow the, the puzzle? And then in red, you have like the Tech 3 ship. Okay. Then the next variable is tier. Tier for Tech 1, uh, manufacturer for Tech 2, and subsystem for Tech free, but I uh, ran out of the space on the presentation, so I just marked tiers. So you start with a rookie ship, tier one, for forget. And then, as time passes, you start going into second tier, for forget. And for forget level two, you move into tier three. You can see that now you get access to the slicer, the navy variation. Then you have access to destroyers. You can move into uh, the wonderful Oguror that everyone here must use. Then you move into the tier two, tier three, and then, okay, the Omen Navy issue is not really tier four, but it just was nice looking, so I put it there. Then, I mean, you got the picture. You got the picture with the battle cruiser, same thing, with the battleships, same thing. Capitals are a bit of an exception. Hopefully, we don't have tiers for them, because otherwise, like tier two, Titan, that would be a bit over the top. So that's for tech one chips. Tiers is a progression metric that uh, we use right now. I mean, uh, in the same class, the higher your tier, the most likely you are going to have more slots, the more hit points you are going to have, and so on. So as you train, for example, the um, Amar Cruiser skill, you are going to move from the Yagiror to then the Arbitrator, and then the, uh, the Omen, and then Mala, and every time you can see the slot progression, or getting the shape and hit points. Okay. But for tech one, tech two, we have manufacturers. So what are manufacturers are just specialization that you apply to a tech one hull to get what you wanted with it. So if you take a Mala, 
you apply a black camo to it, a black sexy camo to it, you add missiles and ta -da, you have a canid ship. So here you can see Khartoum, 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 I don't even sure how you pronounce that in the first place, but okay. Then you move into canid ships and then Vizia. And that's how take two ships are just sorted with each other. And finally, we have like take three, Take three ship is just like subsystems in general, so you just like several subsystems, you just warp on into your, your ship and you get the legend. Okay. So based from all of that, we had just a small game running on this. How many ships do we estimate to be used right now? I mean, we had a look at sludge, eight points, we had a look at popularity of ships as well. And which kind of ships are used right now in the game? Which kind of ships feel need to be improved and which kind are a bit on the verge of just being completely cropped? So let's have a look. That's a chart for uh, all the ships in the game, except a few exceptions, with, like all ships. We don't have pirate ships as well. It's just like tech one, tech two, tech three, and the navy ships for the four main factions. So first, let's have a, a look at the ships we like. I mean, we think are OK. So that's approximately half of them. So yeah, um, half of them being OK. I mean, you still have some exceptions, but it's still going on. Then in yellow, we have ships that are causing issues, but still work somehow. I mean, you have Titans at the hand. Yeah, they work, but they're causing still some issues that we need to look into. And finally, ships that are just they're not happy with. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a bit shameful when you look at this. And the first ship that are completely horrible are the frigates. So imagine you are a rookie player, you just join EVE Online. Welcome to EVE Online. It's a sandbox. Every ship is supposed to be useful. But you should train for battle cruisers because frigates and cruisers are crap. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not a messaging we are, you know, uh, proud of. So we would like to change that. Half of the ships are just crap. I mean, half. It's just like we gave you a bottle of beer, a glass of beer, and we replaced half of it with motor oil. Just like. Enjoy your beer, guys. It's the same thing here. I mean, seriously, when you join the game and you see that, when we saw that, it's just like, okay, we need to do something about that. And that's why, that's why we are moving to the next part, in the future direction. Again, that's not something we are going to implement tomorrow. Uh, it's something that we want in the next month. We want to have a discussion with you. We can't promise it's going to be perfect, but we can promise, and it definitely will, that we want to have feedback with you. So, why do we want to bring that? First, let's clarify tech a bit, because, I mean, as you saw before, you have like these huge blobs, and you don't know how they exactly overlap. So let's have a look again. Tech one, improvement, specialization, generalization later on each side. And then you move on, navy is just a plain improvement over, over tech one. So you just like omen and navy oven, you just gain extra shit on top of it. Pirate is just stacking up on top of that. Most of the time, I mean, you have specializations that are a bit weird regarding pirate, but it's okay, it's okay, we can make do with it. Then, tech two, at the moment, is we think it's supposed to be between pirate and navy regarding um, um, the sense of improvement board. So, and lastly, we have tech three. Tech three is supposed to be less efficient at tech two at a given role. So, I mean, I will leave some time for you to just process that. So, um, yeah, so for example, if we take command ships with the gang links, and we take like take three ships with the same gang links, if we follow this, that means that the command ships with gang links are supposed to give more bonuses than take three with the gang links, which is not the case right now. But take three ships with the gang links, maybe are supposed to be more general. So maybe instead of giving like one or two, they should give like three bonuses to gang links, whereas command ships just give like one now. And it's also why we have issues with just like the Nighthawks, the Tengu, and the Drake being doing kind of the same thing, but just with a different price tag attached to it. So yeah, we definitely want to sort that out, to have a look on how we can make ships less redundant. That means that uh, tech three ships, we are aiming to make them uh, more different regarding the other variations. 
That means we're going to find new models for them to fit on. I mean, I think there is a model presentation later today. I mean, remind me if I'm wrong because I have uh, the memory of a turnip. But um, yeah, we are supposed to have a, like a model presentation and possibly we could tie the tech free ships to some of these models. Again, work in progress, don't scream yet. Next, skill and progression changes. So this is one, I need to be very careful about the messaging because yeah, it created some feedback on the forum, only 90 pages on the dev blog. So yeah, before we start, no matter what we do, if and when we do that, you could still fly the ships you could fly before. So that's how you just train for ships right now. So you can see you have like racial skills for tech one, you have like I'm a frigate, I'm a cruiser, I'm a battleship. Then you have like generic skills like destroyers and battle cruisers, and then you have like all the tech two skill in the middle. So there are several things we don't like about that. The first one is that we are always telling our new players, if you want to be on a competitive level with our veterans, you need to specialize, 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 and you will be able to go into fight easier, more easily. But, 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 the main problem is that if you look at, for example, field command ship and uh, field command ships, in order for you to specialize into them, you need racial cruiser at five, you need battle cruiser at five, and then you need either logistics or AVR sort of at four. And I'm not even counting, counting the leadership requirements here. So what we would like is just like a new player or any kind of player that wants to specialize into command ships. Just make it consistent with the other. You only need battle cruiser at five and the proper tech two skill. You don't need this weird combination of racial cruiser at five and so on because that's coming from the generic skill. So what we want to do is just split the generic destroyer and battle cruiser skill into four. So um, yeah, so even if we do that, again, I want to make it clear, we make sure to reimbursement. It's going to be a pain in the ass, but we need to do it. So you can still fly the ships you could before. Uh, the second issue, you can see the difference before, uh, before and after, is that it's not really consistent to have like generic skills like destroyers and battle cruisers, and then racial skills like armor cruiser and, uh, and battleship. So we want to make it consistent all the way by having racial skills all the way. To, say, to this, you could say, yeah, okay, yeah, but one, don't you have like make it consistent by having generic skills all the way? So for example, you could start with frigate, you remove Amar, you just like one variation, and then you move it to destroyer, and then to cruiser. To this, uh, the main answer to this is then that it would be too easy for you to just train every single ship because the main issue you have like with battle cruisers right now is that as long as you have the cruiser requirement to free, you can unlock 12 ships by training battle cruiser. So if you train battle cruiser at five, and you have like Amar cruiser at three, and uh, Kalai cruiser at three, you can unlock six ships for one skill, which we believe is too much right now. The second, you can see the difference here next to the previous, and the, the new one is that we cut some tech two. Requirements. So, for example, if you look at other ships and AV other ships, you don't have a, damn it, you don't have a dependency anymore. Same for recons and cover tops. So, why is that? Is that because again, I'm a player. I want to specialize in a, in a ship I like. For, for example, recon ships. I like to just like come and, and clock in my pilgrim and just like rape some people, some some uh, some haulers or whatever, some miners, and. To do that, I still have to, at the moment, train and specialize into a ship I am not interested at all, cover tops. And it's even worse with like field command ship, because if I want to train for um, an absolution, I have to train for the AV assault ship and then for the assault ship as well, requirements, before I can specialize into the command ship I like. That's why you want to do that. Um, also, some comments that uh, came out from the blog is that we are making capital ships a little too easy to uh, train for, which is a very good comment. And uh, to this, again, um, reducing the battleship skill to four was to make it consistent, but there is nothing preventing us from increasing the other requirements to make like the training time to get the capitals the same before and after the change. So don't panic. So next, the next stuff we wanted to do is just 
in the late traps here. It was to just like introduce ship lines. So uh, you may ask yourself, what the fuck are ship lines and what is this madman talking about? Well, ship lines are supposed to remove tears, or what you call tearicide or tearicide. Excuse my accent, I just can't pronounce it white. But tears at the moment, we are not happy with them. We are not happy with them because, as I said before, tears are affecting the slots, are affecting the hit points you get. And uh, in a sandbox game, in a sandbox environment, where we are trying to promote that each ship has a specific role and a specific purpose in the battleship, in theory, having a system that artificially makes ships better than others it's just paradoxical to that purpose. So we want to remove tears, flesh them out down the toilet drain, and have ship lines instead. So again, ship lines, name, uh, ship lines name and icons are again work in progress, so don't scream. The first one we wanted is just like the combat line. So what are combat ships? It's mainly ships that go on the front line and take most of the damage. I mean, uh, to the blog, we compared that to like 18th century ship of the line, and uh, that's quite a good comparison. It's just like ships you want at the core of the, of the battlefield that forms the main bulk of your fleet. Then you will have attack ships. Attack ships are just like uh, many damage ships, just like you can be uh, compared with just like cavalry ships. You can see the icon is mainly look, looking like a virtual E pin because it's damaged. <laughs> Bad joke. Um, yeah, okay, so yeah, comparisons. So for example, if you look at attack chips that you could have in here after the change, will be for example an Armageddon, a Megatron. These are supposed to be ships that just come at the back and smash you in the face. Then, if you like bombardment ships, many this is missile ships, just like the Raven, for example, is a very good uh, representation of that. Then we have like support, support ships, uh, like logistic ships or like um, recon ships, a uh, very good example of that. And finally, we have industrials, like haulers and horse ships and all this stuff. So from this, from this, you could introduce new skills tied with this. And you could have specializations as well to better refine each line. So for example, if you go into combat, combat ships could be like the Abaddon, the Hyperion, or the, um, what was it, the Apocalypse. So here you have two specializations uh, between, for example, sniping ships and just like armor soaking or just more of a tanking ship. I don't like this term much, but okay, we have to use it right now. And the difference would be like, for example, the Apocalypse is mainly sniping, same for the Rock, and then the Abaddon would just be more of a tanky and tank and spark shape. Then you move into attack ships, you have like two specializations, you could have turrets and you could have drones. So for example, Dominic's could be an attack ship, but the uh, Megatron also could be an attack ship. The difference is that one just relies more on the drones than the other. Bombardment ship. So uh, here, you like two specializations we could have is just like, uh, we could have long range, Okay, I know, we know that cruise missiles need to be looked into, so don't smile when I'm saying long range with missiles, because we know. But part of the change is to make that useful as well, is that the first specialization, again, is just like making long range specialization for hitting targets that are the same size or bigger than you. And the second one could be like close range damage for targets that are same size or smaller than you. So for example, if you wanted to have a look at a typhoon or revamp it, Next to the Raven, the Raven could be like long range damage, while the Typhoon could be like close range damage for smaller targets, for example. Again, not set in stone. Support skills, support skills, uh, support skills, support uh, ships. We have like two specializations again. You have disruption, just like the Falcon and the Rook and like recon ships. And then you have assistance, just like logistic ships. And finally, and the serials, like target ships, you have mini target ships, you have like uh, holler with industrials, and you have like mining ships with like ore ships. And then, when we have that, it helps because we have a general guideline on how to balance the ships. It's a lot more flexible than having the tiers because the tiers again force you to have a certain number of slots 
for each class. So if we go into Crozer, you need this amount of slots, and you can't deviate for that, because otherwise you're not really in the same tier. The tier is also causing problems with uh, price balancing in general, because uh, higher tiers are supposed to be more expensive, and that was something that was a bit annoying for like when we had to look at the tier three battle cruisers, for example, because they were supposed to fit a price tag between the tier two battle cruisers and the tier one battleships, and it was like, okay, uh, 50, 60, uh, it was a bit of an auction inside TCP. How much do you want? 50, 55. So yeah. So next was this. We can have general ID and how they fit to each other. Again, this is not fixed. You could see that, for example, the combat ships are very good offense and defense, but very poor mobility. You could see that attack ships have like a very good mobility and a good offense, but their defense is not that great, and so on. I mean, you can win for yourselves here. So yeah, that's how we would like, possibly, to have a look into this. So now, let's have a look at the change and how it's going to impact the, um, the ship tree. And here I'm very happy because I can finally show my big badass picture I shown on the blog, and which was quite too big actually, and here it doesn't matter because it's just fitting. So that's the tree, again, of all the ships in Heave as they are in the game. Why now? With the changes, it will become that. So I'm going to go forth and back several times to explain what we mean here. And then again, before the tech two ships, you had like all this entire class dep dependencies, for example, between uh, Rockons and Cover Hops and uh, AV Assault and Assault. This goes away with the new. You can see something as well in the new one is, can you see it actually? Yeah, you can. Is that um, at the bottom right corner, we now have the ships sorted by uh, ship line instead of having the tiers with the numbers at the top. So that helps. So uh, some example on how this could help the balancing in general. Let's have a look at the prophecy. Who here is using the prophecy except as bait? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Nobody? No, okay. The prophecy could become, with this change, a support ship. A support ship, what does that mean? That all of a sudden, your prophecy that was like a bit of a useless tanking ship, except for bait, now it's becoming a drone ship, more like an oversized arbitrator. And it's part of the support line. So you start with a support line. Uh, I can't remember the forget, the tech one forget that you support. On, uh, nobody uses it anyway. I remember its name. Anyway, you start with a forget. Uh, is it the tormentor or the, um, I can't remember. Anyway, you start with a forget, and then you move uh, into the arbitrator, and then you have the prophecy. The prophecy is that could just use tracking disruptors and drones. And then you could even have a battleship with this, just with this line of having support, tracking disruptors, and drones in general. Um, what does it help as well? Is that the Mala? Who is using the Mala? Yeah, okay, same thing. The Mala could be on the um, combat sheet line. So uh, what will it do for it is that it will be a mini Abaddon. So you could have like, for example, keep the recent bonus and have a damage bonus now on. Have a look at the capacitor, and now it's a ship that's a lot more useful. But this also is that since all the cruisers are in the same pool of slots, it allows us to, to have a look and give fittings and slots to ships that really need them. The Omen, for example, ever try fitting anything on the on Omen? Good luck. But with this, we could give Omen some love. So some more um, explanations. I guess most of you have noticed that some of the Tech 2 ships are changing manufacturers. That is because manufacturers are supposed to be specialized in like one or two things. But we have some inconsistencies right now in the game. We're getting some of them. So for example, the Zealot. The Zealot, if I go back, the Zealot, I think it's a Khartoum ship. Yeah, Khartoum. And now we to, uh, it's a Vizlam, and now we to remove to Khartoum, because Khartoum is supposed to be like this heavy damage, whereas in the new plan, Vizlam is more of a support. So it makes little sense for a ship like the Zealot, which is supposed to be main damage, to still be in a manufacturing line that is not related to it. So that means, like, yeah, sub ships which are not canid will move away from the canid line. 
and so on. I mean, I can't go over all the changes right now. So yeah, that's basically about it. I'm not sure why I'm on time, but I guess you all have questions right now. Do we, do we know the time? Time is six, okay, I guess we have time for some questions actually. Just let me grab the mic. So yeah, does anybody have questions here? Yeah. Thank you. 30 minutes. 30? Okay. Actually, uh, if this is a, a very important constituent issue that people have been asking me about for years, uh, if you're changing the manufacturer on the Zealot, mm -hmm. uh, does that mean that it's finally going to get a proper red paint job? Yes. The point, changing. You got lucky because we uh, almost changed the cool black camo on the Dimension as well. But yeah, let's not do that right now. Otherwise, uh, just hot cream will be terrible. So yeah. Any other question? Uh, this is a more general one about um, supercarriers and s Titans and stuff. What do you actually get into counter those in terms of giving a hard counter that can also be countered? I mean, there was discussion yesterday in the Black Ops about, you know, the Black Ops, you know, the Widow can jam them and stuff. One of the ideas I've actually been discussing with people is giving the electronic attack figures an actual role so they can actually punch through. I mean, they're supposed to be a specialized mm -hmm. One, at the moment they're paper thin, no one flies them except for Alliance Tournament. Has there been any consideration to giving them a role, and that role being they can actually punch through super capital E-war immunity, uh, immunity? Okay, allow me to just sum up your question first because I didn't understood all of it. You're talking about Black Ops and how useless they are and how better you want them to be. No, no, it was one of what was suggested yesterday that, um, you know, for instance, the Widow could be a counter to a yeah. Titan, but the problem is it's got too much tank. So the question is, is something that's counterable would be an electronic attack figure because you know, they're paper thin, one bomb run and they're off the field. Has somebody actually looked at giving the, the electronic attack figure an yes. actual role? Yes. And electronic attack forgets are uh, quite high on the list. Same for of, like how many pilots are using them. Uh, there are more pilots flying Titans than Black Ops. So uh, yeah, we do know there is a problem about them. Uh, organizing fixing Black Ops in general, I guess, I mean, as we said during the Black Ops presentation yesterday, it's all about finding a role for them because at the moment I don't know what they're supposed to be. They're just like uh, identity crisis. Uh, they're supposed to be like attack ships that is just are uh, into the, uh, the fight, or they're more supposed to be like support ships to just move you around. Maybe you could have like split that into two different ships and then boost each ship to just do it properly. So for example, we could have like a battleship lines that, do, that does ACM and the dampening, just like you have recons, and then you could boost Black Ops to just be better at uh, having these gangs moving around by having lower fuel consumptions and so on. Again, that's just a brain fart at the moment. Any other question, please? Hello. Uh, there is a question. Why from all Tech 2 ships, there is no combat specialization at all? There, excuse me, there is no? Why from all Tech 2 ships, there is no uh, combat specialization? They are bar bombardment or attack ship, but not combat one. Only from Tech 1 ship is uh, combat specialization. I mean, that's supposed to be combat. Um, specialization here in Tech 2. It's just like Tech 2, as I said, is mainly focused with manufacturers. So the ship lines are mainly for T1 ships. And the uh, Tech 2 are, are, are more focused on the manufacturers, so you still have combat. For example, the. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's a good question, actually, because. <laughs> 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 because now I think about it. Yeah, you could say, for example, the uh, Absolution is more of a, of, a, of a combat ship regarding these lines than the Zealot because it's uh, supposed to be more resilient, but that's a good point. That's a good point. Definitely, that's something we need to tackle when we do the ship line moving. God damn it, there's a wires everywhere. Anyway, 
So to answer your question, I'm just blubbering one. Okay, that's, okay, cool. Hi. Uh, you were talking about ship lines mm -hmm. and uh, how they were all in line, but curious thing is with it being, you know, with a lot of modules, so you can specify and customize each and every ship, would you also be implementing sort of similar fixes for the modules that will go with the ships? Also, I noticed that Titan is support for the supporting fleet. I'm, I'm not sure I understood the question. Excuse me, but with your accent and... Uh, the, the modules, yes. will they also be balanced according to the ships they go on to? Because you mean the Tech 2 mods for like, let's go on specialized ships, right? Or are you just talking about modules in general? Just like generally modules, say, tracking enhancers, for example, will it be fixed to sort of benefit more of the specific class? rather than, you know, being ab able to be put on any ship and made it okay. into a different okay, okay. kind of ship. Um, the point with module at the moment is that they're supposed to be, like, generic. I mean, then we don't want to restrict too much on what you can do with any kind of setup because it's just then killing the idea of having creative setups coming out of nowhere. Um, any kind of specialized module are more, more, more mainly tied to Tech 2 and possibly Tech 3 when you go to, go to that. So no, at the moment, I mean, you have like some model we're balancing on all this, quite a few, but we are not planning on making them very, very tight to each line, except for most, uh, most likely Tech 2 and Tech 3. Uh, perhaps you haven't considered this as part of ship balancing, but the mass of super capitals is very out of proportion of other ships, and fighting super capitals is more often than often done by bumping the ship rather than shooting the ship. Do you see any scope to increase the mass of these ships or make them harder to bump as part of any balancing activities? So are you talking about bumping ships? Or are you talking about um, just a number of capitals? Because if you look at the mineral components of a super yes. capital, they, and then at the mass, the super capitals weigh a lot less than they should proportionally to other ships. And connected to that, Often okay. with super capitals in combat, what you do is you bump them all the time to stop them entering warp, to bump them out of shields, etc., yeah, which yeah. is probably not working quite as intended. Yeah, yeah, I mean, bumping ships in general is a bit tricky, and we really want to have a look into it. I mean, the same thing when you go out of a sino and just everyone just boom, bumps everywhere. It's just not something we are happy with. And good look into it. Are we going to see, as part of the ship lines rebalancing, a, like a skew towards races, so AMR ships are going to have more combat ships than support ships, and Minmata will have more mm -hmm. attack ships than combat ships, or is it just going to be even Stevens uh, across the races? That's a very good question. Damn, this guy must read my mind. Um, so yeah, depending on the race, you are going to have different ships of each, of each line. So for example, if you look at uh, Calari, they are most likely going to, going to have more bombardment ships than the other races. If you look at Minmata and Galente, they are most likely going to have more attack ships and Amara could have like more uh, combat ships. But nothing is preventing us to add some uh, missing line in the other races at all. But at the moment, yeah, you have some flavor depending on the race, on the lines. Uh, are you gonna be looking at the subsystems for T3s? They seem imbalanced in a lot of areas. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. That's uh, tech free. Subsystems just need to be looked into because at the moment uh, <laughs> we had to look at uh, which kind of tech free ships are being used. You had like 65% so of all tech free ships were Tengu, unsurprisingly. And then you're just like the lucky. And even if you look at, I mean, we can't blame you for going for the ship that is the most efficient because when you look at the um, tech free subsystem, I mean, there are not so many that are useful. So yeah, 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 we definitely want to have a look into this possibly try to tie this with the new modules that fit each of the subsystem lines. So for example, if you go for a tech free ship, you could have like a first subsystem that is tied for the attack role, another subsystem set that is tied for the combat role, another for support, and so on. And then it will be easier to balance. Well, okay, it will be less complicated to balance in general. And yeah, that's something we want to do, if possible. Yeah, my question is actually kind of a follow-up on his. Okay. It's specifically the fact that there's a ship that has a role for scouting, which is the Cobops frigates and stuff like that. And uh, to an extent, uh, cloaky bubble immune T3s can basically do the job better. And I was wondering if you had anything to rest with that. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, that's a point we addressed before, is that ideally in happy, happy pony land, tech three ships are supposed to, do, uh, to be less specialized than tech two. That's part of the plan, but the problem is if you just do that to the letter, then you possibly nerf tech three ships into oblivion. So it's very difficult to just keep this balance going on, and that's why we're trying to make tech three ships different in general to keep a role for them without just making them obsolete. Um, so for example, we try to emphasize anything that help make tech free ships more like generic, more versatile. So for example, uh, try to have like tech free ships where, um, sweep, swap subsystem at Starbase, for example, could be something that we look into. It's very difficult to have a look at this tech two versus tech three difference right now. But yeah, we want to have tech two better to what they are doing because they're specialized in tech three. What does the rebalancing mean for the non-player uh, ships? Like, you've got your mission ships. If you're in faction warfare, you've got the NPC rats that all sit in the plex, and at the moment, they're really unbalanced. You know, one race can solo, another can't and stuff. What's the plans for reflecting these changes that you're talking about into the NPCs? Because one would assume if you're going to do it to the player ships, the NPCs would also match the similar sort of structure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> NPCs just in general right now are just so easy to kill, it's not even funny, it's just like, yay, let's do some uh, sleeper farming and just, yeah, we know when the next wave is going to come on and it's not even funny anymore. So yes, yes, ideally, we want to make NPCs on par, it's just like flash, but not on par, but slightly below, so you still have a challenge. The, the general uh, picture, the general idea is that um, since Eve is supposed to train you with PvP, the PvE is supposed to prepare you for that. So if I go, for example, my, my mission ship into low sec, I don't have to, to fit a PvE setup. I should fit a PvP setup and be able to kill NPCs with that. So when an heavy player pirate comes into my mission, I'm not caught with my pants down. So ideally, yeah, we want to make NPCs a lot tougher, reduce the number, of course. We don't want to kill you too fast. But yeah. Um, we also have a look at the uh, racial, um, like, uh, e-war in this balancing. I mean, uh, I guess that the ECM for Galdari is, uh, well, a racial thing, but it deactivates you <laughs> completely. Whereas well, the, the Minmatar or the Amar or the, the Jalenti, they will reduce your effect and you can counter it with a, with a module that actually works. So you're talking about having counter? Because, because of Falcon, again, yeah. Because of Falcon. <laughs> okay, ECM is a bit tricky, but the main problem with ECM is that it's just time locking you in, in general, is that uh, you have to relock every time you just lose, uh, every time you're just being jammed. So um, yeah, we're not happy with ECM in general, but it's again very uh, tricky to do because we don't want to make it useless. If anything, we want to have a look at electronic warfare in general. We would like to have a look at dampeners. They're not so much used right now. Uh, I mean, you use uh, like uh, Narazu or Lakazis for the warp scrambler range mainly. We don't use it that much for the dampening. And then, I mean, same for the Mimata. I mean, target painters for Iwa, seriously. So yeah. We definitely want to have a look into the different EWA models for the different factions. Any other questions? <laughs> Sorry. We, uh, we talked um, yesterday also about the uh, command ship and uh, Tech 3 um, swap of uh, commands, Boney. At the moment, a um, Tech 3 command ship is not viable on grid. Okay. It's just impossible to, uh, to bring a, a command ship Tech 3 on, uh, on grid. Are you considering to drop the um, command processor requirement for a command ship? I mean, I fit a Tech 3 command ship like a Loki. I should not be able to use command processors because the command processors just mean I have to completely discard my tank. I have to slap co-processors all over. Mm -hmm. Are you considering to make them viable when they are less powerful as a normal, normal command ship to bring them on grid? Okay, that's a specific change that we started to discuss. 
at just their own table is that ideally, we would like command shapes to be on grid. Ideally, again, nothing is in stone right now. So if we bring them on grid, of course, there is this issue of tank and fitting command models. And uh, we are looking into this. I mean, I can't really answer that right now. I mean, we know it's an issue. And uh, that requires some design time to come up with solution and different you know, feedback. But yeah, yeah, yeah. If we move the command shape on grid, we need to have a look into that. Are you, are you worried at all with uh, defining roles for ships that you're going to uh, tread on the toes of people who like to fit in an, an unconventional manner? Um, you know, people, the ships, people don't necessarily use ships in the way that have been intended. And so if you're, if you're applying a new role and saying this ship will be used for this purpose, mm -hmm. are you worried at all that people are going to um, have their gimmick ships nerfed? I think what, what was your last sentence? Have their, their gimmick ships nerfed, basically. I didn't have tank tanker ships. Yeah, so the sh ships that are used for uh, an, an, an unintended purpose or for. Um okay, okay. Um, I mean, you already have that in game. You already have, like setups that are just like used most of the time for the same ship. But yeah, yeah, you need definitely to be careful. As I said, at the moment, it's just like the ship lines are more of a, of a guideline for not to use the ship, and now for us to balance the ship as well. So you have to be very careful about how you apply that in practice because we don't want to kill the creativity. But remember, most of the time, when a new shape or new changes come on, the first thing that happens is that you have like one or two guys coming up with a min max setup, and then everybody follows with the same setup, the same optimized setup for the same shape. So it's very difficult to break that as well. My question is basically a follow-up on his. Is it on your mind um, that some people actually don't often fly in fleets and they like to prefer to fly the ships alone through space? And currently, a lot of the tier two battle cruisers are used for that because you can like sort of fit them all around. You can fit tank, you can still have damage, and you can actually fight larger numbers than your own one ship effectively. Is it on your mind to make sure that when you rebalance the ship, people can still fly ships solo in PvP and that we're not out of a ship that we can actually effectively use against larger groups of people? Mm -hmm. That's a very tricky question because uh, no matter what we do, um, it's within the human nature to just blob. Blob and come in and you have like one ship in the belt, oh, it's a bait. But um, yeah, I mean, we are trying to do that, but it's very difficult because you guys are very creative and very smart and you always come with ways to just find corner uh, issues to the system. But yeah, if possible, of course, we want to keep some Solo going on, for example, the Galant with the blasters and your face was, I mean, designed for solo or small gun, so that's definitely something you want to keep going on, if possible. But regarding the tier two battle cruisers, I know I'm not going to be popular about saying that, but maybe they are doing things too well at the moment. Any other questions, please? So, okay, then let's go today. Thank you all for coming. I hope. I hope I will see you at the round tables. I think it's a Saturday at two, so see you there. Thanks, thanks a lot. <laughs>